E fisherman who know so well the dangers of the deep, come listen to a mournful tale and join your tears to weep. I've been playing traditional music ever since I was really young because I think that's what I guess the reason is because that's what I heard. That's what I heard from. That was the first music my ears ever heard. Uh, it was the first. Um, type of music. It was the first type of singing that I ever became accustomed to and it just, I was, so I, I really think that I was, you know, bred into it, you know, when everybody else was rebelling and doing the whole uh, don't want to listen to what my parents listen to kind of thing, I was face and eyes into their CD collection as much as possible, never once turned it away. My brother and I have, um, have always shared a, a have always shared that passion for traditional music. Me, I mean, me and Alan have been singing. We've we've had a shared tra trad repertoire since we were, you know, that high. Um, and uh, and you know, I mean, he's he's learned or inherited or whatever you want to call it, the same you know type of songs um, th that I have. I first saw Dad play guitar and learned the basics from him, but then it was my brother who I learned the rest from. Music is, 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 a, is an incredibly powerful vehicle as to how people learn about themselves. It was certainly an incredibly powerful vehicle as to how me and Matthew asked questions about where we came from. Um, and one of the primary sources for that was, was the album. Woman of the sea, man, why are you crying? Woman of the sea, man, why? Woman of the sea, man, why are you crying? Woman of the sea, man, why? My father, along with my Uncle Pat and their good friend Baxter Wareham, recorded an album in 1982 called Towards the Sunset. And of course, that was a, a, a really influential record. That LP sold over 10,000 copies here from the store alone, and the CD continues to be one of our best sellers. Uh, here at O'Brien's, one of our main goals and reasons for existence is to help promote and preserve Newfoundland music, and to keep the, tr the tradition going, keep the music alive from one generation to the next. Both of my parents are from Resettle Pazentia Bay. Originally, that they come from a, a they come from a, a kind of a sitting around kitchen tables, and and uh, you know it's it's the social exchange of songs and melodies. Mom had the wherewithal when she was like in her twenties to go out and sit down with with older people in the community, Pazentia Bay singers, um, and sit down either with a, with pen and paper or with uh, with a, a tape recorder or both, and uh, and record them singing songs that nobody sings, you know, we're, we're really in danger of being lost. And so I, I think, like, I really look up to that, because I'm just kind of like, man, I'm, you know, I, I'm still busy recording the stuff that I've just been lucky enough to kind of inherit or find fairly easily in her collections, which she painstakingly made, right? So in the traditional music sense, those are the heroes for me, and it's, made, it's given me like a window into their whole life, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the beauty of it. It's just in my DNA to collect things and save things and f try to find things and get them out there and, you know, uh, maybe resuscitate old documents, old songs. So uh, much as many of the songs I sing, uh, you know, are, are sources which wouldn't ever be heard again, or wouldn't otherwise be heard unless unless someone took the time to to to, uh, to, to, to breathe new life into them. It's a very social thing. It's the social aspect of traditional music which I which I love most. You make connections, I think, which are really real, and in today's world, that's something to be preserved. I'm just interested in that. But I think everybody has their own uh, part of their own history or part of Newfoundland history that they're looking to get from this music. Everybody has their own reason to pursue it. Um, everybody, you know, wants to preserve this for a different reason. And uh, it is all connected to it. It has to be all connected to identity because that's how they stake out their identity. Men, uh, women, they're, they're both revered just as much for the contributions they've made to the traditional music in Newfoundland that I've seen. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, people like Anita Best and Pam Morgan, 
are just revered for what they've done. You know, those those uh, Come and I Will Sing You books. You know, I mean, the, the names at the forefront of them are Genevieve Genevieve Lear and Anita Best and Linda Byrne. These are strong women, right? Like these are women who who really like kind of you know broken new ground in the folkloric world and kind of you know their contribution has really you know been made a lot of waves in in, in the Newfoundland canon of music. We've done so much for like preserving this really really brilliant art form. You know? Um, there was a time, maybe 10 years ago, or, or maybe 12 or 15 years ago, when you know, when I couldn't get away with singing a, a, a ballad downtown, you know, uh, and, I, and the Dardanelles couldn't put 200 people in the ship, you know, and make people dance, and, and you know, I, I think that's it's we're into a we're into a kind of a revival which has opened people's ears to that again. Um, it's the it's the connections with people, you know, and it's it, with me in, for my experience I think the connection to people who I never got to know or people who yeah you know the people f that were part of my past but you know that, that I didn't rub shoulders with you know it's, that's I've come to realize that that's one of the things that I really love about about singing these songs obviously traditional music is a thing of the past by virtue of what it is it's 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 songs that are you know hundreds or you know hundreds of years old I mean it's people who you know, are, are now part of history. Uh, it's, you know, talks about events. Or the, part, the fact that it is part of the past does not at all mean that it's worth leaving in the past. I'm a, I'm a singer of traditional songs that have, that, um, you know, the writers of which, and the composers of which are, are not always known. Um, the, the ballads and the traditional songs, the unaccompanied chanties and stuff that I sing are, you know, they, they go pretty far back, a lot of them, and, and they, uh, so they aren't, um, you know, they aren't, they're Newfoundland versions of the so of songs, you know, uh, they might be a song that made its way over here from Scotland or England or Ireland or whatever, but um, is it really a truly a Newfoundland song? That's, that's open for debate, I mean, that's, that's, that's for folklorists, I think, to decide, and I don't profess to be one, you know, but um, the, the Newfoundland song, I guess, um, would be the one written. By a Newfoundlander. Um, the, the difference is a grey one. All I know is that for me, I'm not a writer of the songs. I'm a kind of a seeker or an inheritor of the songs. And uh, I'm really attached or I'm really interested in a, uh, a, a song that has a beautiful melody combined with a great story. And I think when you marry the two properly, it's just fantastic. Jim Harris was going down Paradise Sound, which is in the shank of the Buren Peninsula, and uh, going for bait one time. And he had a, what might be called a happy accident. That is, he had a little slouse into another boat in the fog, but there was no one killed or nothing like that, so Peter and Leonard decided the proper thing to make up a song about it just so that the, to be immortalized. And the song is called Jim Harris. It goes like this. Twas in 1934, Twas the last day light in May. Jim Harris in the Ronald P. from St. Karen sail away. He sailed away in search of bait till he came to Paradise Sound, where to his sad and great mistake the Irene he ran down. As they lay to their anchor, all hands was filled with joy. Not thinking any accident to them was drawing nigh. Until the Ronald hove in sight, more joyful did they feel. With swelling sails and flowing sheets Taking eight knots from the reel